Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, Oliver Stone's uh, 1987 film with Charlie Sheen, Martin Sheen, Michael Douglas. Um, the plot, again, for those who have not seen it, a, a young and impatient stockbroker is willing to do anything to get to the top, including trading on illegal inside information taken through a ruthless and greedy corporate raider who takes the youth under his wing. Um, and, and for me, and, and sort of what this captures is, you know, again, this view of New York, there is, there is a dark side to it. Um, and, you know, New York is where Wall Street is, which is the seat of uh, global financial power. And it really means like, in a way, New York then is maybe more important or powerful than even like Washington, D.C. in terms of a city of, of power. So it's very hard for me to separate like the city of New York and the feeling there from that the financial sector, which has only grown in the last 20 years, especially. Um, and, you know, personally and politically, I don't view the financial sector in a good light at all and, and think that this movie does a good job of showing not only like how seductive that industry and that lifestyle is, but also how destructive it can be both personally, but then also to the fabric of America, the family, and then also just other, you know, small business um, and corporations. So, you know, in this film, you know, Charlie Sheen starts out as this young stockbroker, very much like Peter Parker in Spider-Man 2, like kind of struggling to make ends meet, but he has this ambition. Um, and you see Michael Douglas, who's uh, this, you know, corporate raider, kind of treated as like, uh, you know, much like a devil, sort of like tempting him into this lifestyle with, oh, look at all these riches that he has. He has power, he has money, he has the women and all these things, all these material things. And that's very seductive to, to Charlie Sheen's character. And I think it really does to me, there, I, there, I've always viewed New York with this dark side, this dark and destructive side um, that not only hurts the, the person, like as in this film, again, Charlie Sheen goes through a lot of, on, on his own, but can be destructive of family members. Like he, in a way, like ruins his father's life because of what Michael Douglas kind of leads him to do, um, destroys other companies. So it's not only like destructive on a personal level, but also on a societal and family level. Um, and I think this has become, to me at least, even more kind of Im important as, again, that we've seen a lot of the, the destructiveness of the financial sector to America and the world over the last 20 years. And New York is really kind of at the heart of it. Um, so I think it does, again, a great job of capturing this like seductive side of what a big city is and what it can do to you and, and to the morals or lack of morals that you might have. Um, so, yeah, I mean, especially like now, really, like when I go to New York now or every time I've kind of gone, honestly, in the last like 30 years, I've seen the city like more and more transform into a place where like only the Michael Douglases are kind of there and can survive. Um, and the, the Peter Parkers of the world of like the young kid kind of starting out, like you really, especially even on Manhattan, uh, it's very, very hard to do that anymore, which it didn't used to be. And I think that really speaks to like the, the negative side of what I think New York is um, kind of unleashed. Wall Street has unleashed on New York in the last, uh, in the last kind of 20 years. So similar to what you, the film, The Sweet Small Success in the sense of there, it is showing a lot of like the darker side of, of New York City and what it can do to, to, to someone who kind of lives there in that seductive way too. Um, but yeah, that, this is definitely a film that I think more and more I associate with New York City when I think about it. Totally. Great film. Uh, what is your relationship with the film itself? Like, when did you first watch it? And, and why is this movie, you know, stuck with you based on when you watched it the first time or, you know, on repeat viewings and such? Yeah, that's a great question. So when I was growing up um, as a young teen, like really getting into to, to movies and through directors was sort of like what I started obsessing about. Um, and Oliver Stone was one of my favorite directors. I mean, JFK, like when I first watched that as a kid, like blew my mind. So I went back and tried to watch like everything that he had done I, up until that point. Um, Wall Street was one of the first then films that I came across and thought it was great and, and loved it and things. Um, but as I, you know, I would come back to it um, as my sort of political identity was being shaped as I got older and, you know, going, sitting through, um, you know, like the WTO protests, like Battle of Seattle in like 1999 and um, really seeing like obviously the financial crash in 2000, you know, seven, eight, nine. And, you know, kind of, again, that was because of, of Wall Street, like kind of going back to this film and realizing, oh, this is so kind of prescient. And, and sort of uh, kind of warning what the force when unleashed in this way, like the whole greed is good speech that he gives, um, that would just became more and more um, kind of a, as a warning to, to me as, as I developed this political identity. So, you know, I've seen it many, many times over the last, you know, 20 years. 
ever since first discovering it, but I, I find it to be more biting and in a way kind of sad because this was from, from 1987. And yes, there was a lot of, you know, horrible financial crimes going on in that decade too, but I think kind of pale in comparison to, to what, uh, you know, we witnessed that in terms of growing through that financial crisis, um, the great recession, and even now uh, so a lot of things, you know, Bernie Madoff and what Enron was doing, like all this sort of bad, uh, immoral financial dealings. It just became, to me, just became more and more, uh, you know, hit harder, honestly, to me, um, the more uh, I've lived my life. Yeah, no, totally. And great film. Again, I have not seen this in a while, but it's funny when I was thinking about the list and thinking about Sweet Spell of Success, it was Wall Street that I was sort of bouncing this movie. Interesting. Mm. Uh, I just don't have that sort of a personal connection with Wall Street, even though I loved it. Uh, but I obviously watched it, you know, when I was not in the US, so it didn't have mm. that sort of impact on me. And I've seen it since and, you know, obviously loved it and admire uh, Oliver Stone a ton. Uh, but yeah, a good one to revisit for sure. But I do remember, kind of like you were saying about Peter Parker, it's almost like if Peter Parker were to cross the dark side, mm -hmm. the dark side, that's sort of what Wall Street is. Uh, and that's the seductive, at the same time, kind of dark uh, underpinnings of it that I, initially when he's getting lured into the new world, I remember as a as a 20 something year old watching it and feeling quite energized and excited myself, mm -hmm. you know, because you also wanted the attention and the new clothes and the new apartment and all of that. Uh, but then very quickly, it all becomes a cautionary tale, obviously. Exactly. Not just mm -hmm. for the person and their life, but the world at large. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.